Watch twice, isn't it? <laughs> ah, Rafiki. <laughs> that baboon is pretty wise. <laughs> I, I think about the symbolism of baptism. When Pastor Steve baptizes someone, he says, he says, raised to walk in what? Do you guys know what he says? <laughs> newness of life. Newness of life. If we are a new creation, then what does the past have to do with it? Are you a new creation, church? Amen. Are you made new by Christ? Amen. Our past was never meant to condemn us. This is the thing. Just as Rafiki said, our past is meant for us to learn from. Mm -hmm. Learn from. God uses us as a whole, not as a separated compartment of who we are in Christ, but our whole life experience. Everything that happened in our lives, God wants us to use for his glory. Why? Because we have specific things that God teaches us through these experiences that, that he wants others to learn because of us. He uses these things to bring about his purpose in our life. Now, I, I mentioned a conversation that Jesus had with Peter and um, doesn't talk about Peter's denial, but what it does talk about is very interesting. We're going to look at that right now. John 21, 15 through 19. After breakfast, I'm going to let him give you an opportunity to turn there. Flip some pages. I don't, I don't have to. It's right here. It's already loaded. <laughs> After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord. Peter replied, you know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, and feed my sheep. I tell you the truth, when you were young, you were able to do as you liked. You dressed yourself and went wherever you wanted to go. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and others will dress you and take you where you don't want to go. Jesus said this to let, them, let him know by what kind of death he would glorify God. Then Jesus told him, follow me. Essentially, what Jesus is saying to Peter is, I did not die on the cross so that you could be the person who denied me three times. Mm -hmm. I erased that sin That's good. and all others. Now, if you truly love me, you will take care of my followers. What Jesus gives is not a, I told you so. It's not, how could you deny me after all I've done for you? It's a challenge. It's a challenge. Number two, Jesus challenges greater growth. He doesn't condemn us. He challenges greater growth. Jesus forgave us. He redeemed us. He set us free from sin. He made us a new creation. Why? Was it so we could be the same or so that we could be different? Why challenge Peter at all if he came to do was just forgive us of all our sin? If all he wanted to do was forgive us, then Peter, what Peter does after, after Jesus ascends doesn't matter. His life could be the same. It wouldn't matter if all that Jesus did was come to forgive us. That is not what happened. He says, Peter, do you love me? Peter responds, Jesus, you know I love you. So what does Jesus say? He says, he says feed my lambs. And he asks a second time, Peter, do you love me? Peter responds, Lord, you, you know I love you. Jesus says, then take care of my sheep. Jesus asks a third time, Deny three times, you're going to get asked three times, do you really love me? <laughs> Peter, do you love me? 
And Peter's hurt. Peter's hurt. Lord, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. That's so. Feed my sheep. Now there's two things that Jesus wants Peter to remember. Number one is who he is. And number two is who he belongs to. And we're going to put both of those up. Who you are and who you belong to. Jesus says, you declared that you love me so much that you would die for me. And the truth is, Peter, you will. I paid the price for you. Now you, you must follow me. If we are free from the condemnation of our sins, and we don't have to worry about our past, then what does that mean for our future, church? I know this. I know that our future does not belong to us. It doesn't belong to us. We don't get to say... This is what I'm going to do with my future. Our lives are his. And just like Jesus said to Peter, if you love me, then follow me. Take care of my sheep. That, that is what Christ wants from us. Jesus never condemns us. He challenges us to live for him. He doesn't condemn us of our past, of our sins. He challenges us. He challenged Peter to live for him. Some of you in this place have never received forgiveness for your sins. You haven't accepted that free gift from God. And some of you may have accepted that forgiveness, received that forgiveness, but... You're living in the past. You're remembering your past sins. You're remembering who you were before you knew Christ. Or even a little after you said yes to Jesus with your words. Maybe you used to walk closely with the Lord and, and some sin caused you to fall away. And you haven't moved on. Some of you were in a place where you let go of your past, you received Forgiveness, but at this point, you don't know who you are. You don't know what you were saved for. Mm. What you were redeemed of to be what you're supposed to be now. You know that Christ paid the price for you, but you are living right now for yourself. Now, I want to ask you, out of all those things, is now the time for change yes. is now the moment where that becomes the past and now you have an opportunity for the future. Now we're not gonna have a, a public invitation today. We're gonna do something else. But in a minute, I'm gonna pray for us. And while I'm praying, I want you to ask yourself this question. And it's very important that you're honest with yourself because words mean nothing, right? We all say them. We might say we love Jesus, but unless our lives actually show that, it means nothing. So here's the question. Knowing that Christ died for me to redeem me of my sins, am I willing to live for him? It's a simple question with a difficult answer, isn't it? It's a very simple question to ask, but when you try to answer it, you say, I don't know. Am I? What if he asks me to to be a missionary, or, or I mean, he, he asked Peter, you know, Peter said he loved him, and, 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 and Peter was going to die for him. I mean, am I willing to die for my faith? It's a hard question to answer. For, for us, it, it means trusting an unknown future to an all-knowing God. But it absolutely means that if we say, yes, Lord, we love you, then we need to surrender all. Not partially, 